everyone and welcome to another episode of Artist Conversations. Um, each week we get up close and personal with an artist and we learn all about their stories and all about their craft. Um, this week we are so lucky to have with us all the way from the Philippines, Amos Van Langert. Hello Amos. Hello. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us Amos. Amos is an artist who does special education as well and he has worked extensively with engaging differently abled people in the creative arts and he lectures in fine arts at the University of Philippines and has been a part of the Art for Good Fellowship working with artists around the world to promote social good and um, he has advocated for disability rights and has worked with the British Council to promote inclusive arts and initiatives around Asia. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, Amos. And um, please, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, thank you, Joel. And good day to everyone, right? So uh, my name is Amos, as uh, Joel um, shared with you. And I work as a creative professional based in Manila in the Philippines. So basically, I do a lot of things as an artist. You know, being an artist is really an exciting and challenging um, um, career or profession because you get to work with so many groups and sectors, especially uh, that I also uh, uh, completed my master's in special education. So I work with a lot of persons with typical and um, um, and uh, typical abilities and disabilities in order to use uh, in order to to share the value and the beauty of art. So uh, I've been working in government here in my country, also um, in the academe to the University of the Philippines. I also work as a freelance mentor for a lot of artists with disabilities. And basically, I consider myself an advocate, um, uh, more than anything else, you know, uh, 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 traveling in, uh, across my country, in Southeast Asia, as far as uh, South Asia and uh, Europe in order to share uh, what we've been doing, not just as a country, but as a region in this side, in this side of the world, uh, about uh, how arts, uh, the intersection rather of arts and special education, which um, is, is, is really falling into the inclusive arts. Great, thank you. Um, how did you first get involved in the inclusive arts? Like, what, what drew you? Uh, yeah, you know, my, my, my journey as an artist is really, really, uh, I consider it very, very special because uh, when I was young, I started out uh, at the age of 10, I started to paint and I started to join a lot of art contests and my parents and my teachers saw some potential in my, uh, in, 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 in my, in my talent. So eventually I went into the fine arts for college and then I, um, I did some, I, I did work I I, I I took some jobs in advertising publications. You know, but along the way as I was growing up, I um I had a cousin who had a cousin who was the same age as me. And of course in our family, in our extended family where we live in one uh, cluster of neighborhood, main neighborhood, um I really saw how we how how the how family uh, really um tried to nurture his abilities. Uh, he's a very, he's, he's very, very physically uh, active, but of course, uh, because of his uh, condition, which has a vision, um, there were really a lot of moments wherein we wanted to, uh, to, to, to intervene in his, uh, of course, in his challenges based on his condition. So pretty much at the start, it was not really my intention to, to intersect arts and special education or art and did it for disability and art towards uh, for disability welfare. Uh, but eventually, um, after I took my master's in special education, I really saw how helpful it was to them, uh, for a person like him to be able to express himself. And so that is where the story of my uh, work as and uh, work as an uh, inclusive arts practitioner came in. At the start, um, it was not. I didn't really. I couldn't really identify what kind of work I was doing because it was basically um, specialization within a specialization. But of course, uh, with the opportunities that came, uh, I became. Um, asked, uh, I, I became. Uh, I attended some conferences in Hong Kong, in Singapore, and uh, other parts, and in India. And that's where I realized that it's really um, something that is being um, recognized. Nice globally, and that is where I was able to identify that hey, this is really a discipline, and this is really um, 
advocacy and the movement that I think I can contribute to and will benefit people in my country. Thank you. That's such an inspiring story. How how you know you first got involved because of your cousin. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that journey? You know, it, it sounds like you've, you've met so many people, you've, you've had so many experiences along the way. But you know, what what are some of the most rewarding or some of the most challenging things that you've had along the way? Yeah, actually, um, of course, uh, you know, working in the towards this, working in this intersection is something that is really really uh, fulfilling, you know? in the sense that, of course, uh, you get to see not not just yours. I, I don't get to see myself just as an artist, as an artist working with other artists, and of course, um, in a sense that is very very rewarding because. Of course, you get to uh, be socially connected with other people, uh, regardless if they have a disability or not. Um, you get to connect with them through the arts. But of course, the challenges also come in because, of course, I'm working uh, with a diverse, uh, uh, with, with a diverse um, um, a range of, um, of, of of co-artists and students. So somehow, also my my uh, my skills and knowledge as an artist being put to the test. Uh, of course, you can see in this work that I'm sharing with you. You see, um, it, it also takes um, some sort of um, uh, another lens, another artist, creative and artistic lens to see how beautiful these works are. So of course, in the process, I had to of course shift my attitudes towards the arts. Um, you know, growing up in an environment where in, um, you were being trained in the fine arts and the formal qualities of art, of course, there is really a definition of what art should be and should not be. Of course, but eventually, when I saw how our creativity within each person can lead to artistry and developing of talent, that is where you see that art actually has a bigger definition than what we are uh, traditionally taught uh, to see. And so uh, this mixture of rewards and challenges is actually what drives me and motivates me. Uh, even to this day when, of course, uh, everything has shifted because of the pandemic. Yeah, you know, that's so meaningful what you've just said. I think sometimes art can be so, you know, I, I teach literature in school and I think sometimes we tend to be so like, delimiting don't we we kind of say this is what's right and that's what's wrong but you know there's so many things that can be beautiful it's, it's something that's so special about someone with special needs that is able to use art to to express himself i think i think that is beautiful in and of itself it doesn't have to follow very very strict rules um yeah <laughs> being a difficult time in your life. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Has it, um, wh what's been so challenging uh, for you guys during uh, uh, Yeah, sure. actually, you know, um, of course, um, you know, you know, what happened during this uh, year you know, was really, really something that I really didn't expect. You know, uh, last February and March, you know, at the onset of the pandemic, I was actually traveling in London for an inclusive arts research. Actually, it was not just in London, the, in the whole United Kingdom. I met around four, more than 14 artists, uh, practitioners, working in the inclusive arts. And I actually immersed myself uh, together with these artists with disabilities. You know. And uh, what happened was that um, the, the lockdown, the pandemic, suddenly surprised everyone. And I was even locked, locked out. Uh, my country went into a lockdown. And you know, I was still there at the UK. So, of course, uh, from a from a from from an environment where you can move around, where there's so much vibrant vibrancy and in meeting so many people, I had to cut my trip short and go home to a situation where we're all staying at home and we're all self isolating. So, of course, first, um, maybe the impact is on me personally as an artist because someone is being used to going around in my country. Asia and uh, of course in that part of the world during that time, um, I sort of got um, confused and disoriented, and I and I, I really saw it. Um, of course, eventually it was just not me. I realized that it was really something that was happening to everyone all over the world. 
And so uh, when I try to reconnect with um, the, the persons with disabilities and their families who I work with, they're pretty much experiencing uh, different kinds of anxieties. And so I did at first. I didn't feel like uh, at that point I felt like I was not alone in that kind of struggle. And second is that um, there was a time element. Of it. I had to come up with ways on how they I can use the online platform to help them out. So what happened was that um, I worked with, uh, with, with with some of them, with some of these these um, diverse artists. And we started to do creative journaling sessions. It's basically a it's kind of art facilitation that is modified to fit into the online platform. It's basically um, um, using simple strategies as a facilitator and um, and I'm guiding them with simple topics so they can do artworks even when they're at home. And at the start, it was sort of um, it was sort of wobbly because of course we were not really used to connecting with each other. Screen to the screen, but eventually I realized how beautiful that was uh, for us to be able to share our thoughts and ideas, just like this work that you're seeing. Uh, one of the art, one of the art, the artists I work with. Um, you know, um, there's been. Um, um, I, I I really saw how essential it was. You know, um, at this point in time, art may not be as urgent as what, the, of course, what compared to when you're in the medical field, the medical profession, of course, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in any kind of um, intervention um, because of the health crisis. But, you know, art um, started, for me, art began to play a role of um, becoming a platform for them to express what they feel and what they think. Uh, because of the uncertainties of the situation. And that is where I was able to uh, resume my practice as an artist and as an inclusive arts practitioner in the new normal. Well, that's so true what you've just said about how, you know, we have seen that during a time um, arts are not as important to them than, you know, all these other needs. But I think, especially, I, I come from a society that's very pragmatic minded. We kind of, you know, put all the other practical utilitarian needs first, and art comes very secondary. But, you know, art is so precious, isn't it? It's so empowering, especially to people, I think, with special needs. Can you share a bit more about that? With this? You know, what, why do you think that art is so, so precious to people with special needs? Well, Joel, if we're going to uh, if we're going to um, uh, talk about art and, and creative and, and in terms of personal expression, you know, feelings go both ways. Uh, there is what we call the positive feelings and the feelings, which of course are something that is um, that, that, that that's um, uh, that's a negative uh, influence to us, right? Um, and that is, I think, where art plays a role because, of course. Um, in this kind of situation, wherein we do not have control over what's happening, um, we become vulnerable to these negative feelings. And if we recognize and acknowledge it, that that it's happening within us, actually that makes us stronger. And so, through this art, through the art the activities or through the creative process, I allow them to actually express both feelings. Uh, first, of course, is the anxieties and the confusion and the perturbation. You know, along the way, when we talk with each other or online, um, they get they ask me, "When is this going to end? Why are we all doing using face masks?" And of course, me myself, no, I didn't answer that because uh, uh, this is really we are at the onset of something of something that is that we don't know how it will how that will end. So. What we did together you know, as co-artists was to express those feelings uh, and, 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 and tell each other that, um, of course, we are all uh, confused by this situation. And so that makes it, uh, that, that feeling of venting this out becomes beautiful in the process. And eventually, of course, on the other side of the point, um, Art is a source of inspiration and to talk about our aspirations. And so, uh, like in this work that we are seeing here, um, I'm sharing with you, um, the opportunity of, of uh, increased accessibility through online technology 
and uh, speaking with, with each other uh, in different parts of the world. Coming together in a virtual meeting and doing a session together is something that is really, really um, full of hope. Uh, and uh, somehow, of course, that, that, that gives us a feeling of safety and assurance uh, that when it, we surface that feeling through creative expression, we get to feel better. And you know, that was really the journey that we were having actually until now because the sessions are still ongoing and of course the pandemic is still ongoing. So that is where uh, it played a role. And you know, um, you know the, the opportunity to see other plat other attendees on the screen and to share what they feel. That's something that I believe is very, very powerful. And you know, as an artist, that is where I use uh, this as an instrument, the arts as an instrument, to facilitate and to um, allow them to express and communicate what they think and what they feel. But these are such beautiful paintings you've got behind you. Can you tell us a bit more about what goes on during your sessions? Okay. Actually, um, um, you know, the, the themes and the subjects were guided. So. Um, it had a, we had a very, very uh, wide range of, of topics to explore. Uh, it, it, it went from as, as, as simple as uh, listening to music and doing art together, and uh, there were also topics where it really, uh, where we really uh, talked about COVID nineteen head on, you know, and you know the the the, uh, the different feelings that you get based on these topics. Uh, I think allowed uh, uh, man, these artists, as well as me, of course, because I was working with them uh, through the process to generate ideas that, of course, um, and then using the techniques that I would suggest and using the colors that would, would, would make it very, uh, very attractive and appealing on screen. You know, there are new kinds of uh, styles that were being developed, and you know the and, and, and suddenly you know, we're, we're creating they're creating new styles, they're exploring new directions in terms of their artistry creating, which I think uh, is um, is is something that was uh, specific or uh, or um, that happened uh, because of the new format of uh, doing art. So, you know, if we're going to, to look at the website, uh, inclusivearsinitiative.wb.com, you will see the variety, the diversity in the styles, and the, explore, ex, the explorations that they did during that process, during these, these sessions. And we've now run it for around four months. And, you know, um, it's still evolving. It's still evolving. And, you know, as uh, someone who's uh, teaching in the fine arts in the University of the Philippines, you know, um, you know, I'm seeing so much uh, potential in how these talents can be developed and uh, placing it in the context of the fine arts that we know. In order, and, and that is the reason why we went into a virtual exhibit. It's because, of course, we wanted to showcase uh, that first they are contributors to the arts and culture of a specific period in, in, in history. Second is that, of course, they have the right to share what they feel and contribute to the, uh, to, to the arts of the pandemic. And thirdly is, of course, um, it's an opportunity for them to, um, to um, feel that their talents are, um, they have a place in society. Thank you. Thanks so much for sharing that. You know, this is, I'm so happy that, that you carry them on to um, continue to conduct these sessions even during a pandemic like this. Um, this is actually something really close to my heart because I've grown up with a friend, one of my best friends actually since childhood, and she's got special needs as well. So we used every Christmas and um, paint cards together and send them to all my friends overseas. And you know, I, I could see it really brought her so much joy. And um, when when my friends would receive her cards and they'd express their appreciation. And I wanted to ask what 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 do you think is that the greatest lesson you've learned from working all these years with um, artists of special needs? The most important lesson I've learned in um, my work working with uh, in my work with artists with disabilities is um, the trust that happens in the engagement. 
um, I think that first as a co-artist, uh, I jump actually when I work with them, I don't work as a teacher or I don't work as a um, facilitator. I think and based also on the foundations of the music arts, it's really more of two artists working together. And you know, the level of trust um, on my end that we will be able to create something together on our respective papers or through collaborative art. Um, the, the, the trust first is in the person that um, that the other person is trusting me that I'm going to work with him or her and that I'm going to trust him or her also that we will come up with something good together. Um, and secondly is to trust the creative process because that is something that both of us uh, uh, are exploring in the process. So whatever will come out at the end, we have to believe that first um, that 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 we will we will we will appreciate and will be satisfied with the creative output. And the second thing, secondly is that whatever magic will come out of it is something that we have to trust you using the creative process. So that's the most important thing I've learned. It's really more of trusting each other and trusting the creative process in order to upgrade actualize ourselves. I, I think that's really, really um, inspiring that you, you believe in them, you believe in their potential. Um, I wondered if you can tell us as well about what, what you would like to see from the special needs community um, moving forward. You know, Joel, uh, of course we all aspire for an inclusive society wherein um, if we're going to, uh, of course, use the framework of the social model of disability, of course, we want to see the world shifting and changing its attitudes towards uh, uh, towards disability. We want to see an environment where they can freely walk, they can freely contribute their art, well, they can also work and they can also have uh, good careers uh, in, in this world. We're also seeing some policies and rules and laws where their rights and their welfare can be protected. Of course, uh, at this point, um, it's really a step-by-step -step process because we're, uh, because of course, how we deal with disability and how we view it is, is still something that we, the world has to learn on. And, um, the special needs community for um, the disability sector is in need of understanding, it's in need of protection, and of course, um, art plays a role in this one because you know, art is a um, platform for promoting social equity, diversity, and inclusion. And if we give this opportunity for them to, 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 to gain accessibility in the arts, then, of course, that is basically um, helping um, and a sort of support to building this kind of inclusive society that we are envisioning. So, um, that is, I think, what each parent, each teacher, each artist, each advocate should, uh, should put into mind. That, of course, um, um, this special, this is special sector. Of course, this is not an exclusive sector. It's not different from the others, uh, from the other sectors that also need a lot of protection and support. But of course, isn't it that uh, why we are actually um, um, creating movements? That is the reason why we are going beyond ourselves, uh, developing missions in order to help others. I think it's really because of the uh, the the to, to enable a world that is more equitable, that is that is um, that, that gives opportunities to the most number of people. And the special needs community is in need of that too. That's so true. I, I'd love to see a world like that, hopefully in the very near future. And um, lastly, what's one thing you have to share with those of us, you know, who've got friends, family, special needs? <laughs> Yeah, uh, basically, um, in, in relation to my uh, to, to 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 what I just just discussed, of course, um, uh, sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we we feel that it, it, uh, that that that, it's, that that the uh, that the goals and the visions that we have are coming in a little slow. And of course, this pandemic has um, has of course has an, had an impact. 
all of course uh, the accessibility of um, of uh, persons with disabilities, for example, to the arts, because you know, with, at the onset of this uh, of this year, uh, at the onset of this uh, situation, uh, of course, uh, all of the sessions, all of the performances, all of the, all, all of the programs have been put on hold. But but of course, um, um, eventually, um, we get to survive. We get to thrive. We get to hope, and I think that is where um, that is where um, the, that, that, that that is one thing that that will keep us going, having hope. Uh, of course, um, of course, we hope that uh, this this pandemic will end. First of all, second is that we get to resume with our advocacy and movements and. Uh, and, and what our plans and programs are as we go towards um, being, becoming a more inclusive society. And of course, one day, uh, we'd like to see them, uh, everyone, sharing the same space. We want to see everyone being safe in this kind of space. And um, uh, it, um, it, it may happen, but it takes one step at a time. Um, you know me, um, my work and my vision as an artist working in the uh, working in the inclusive arts. Of course, I, I do not dream that everything will be resolved uh, with me alone or with me with, with me doing this. Of course, uh, it's a long journey. It's a process. It may happen even beyond my lifetime. But at least I get to contribute something. I, at least I get to help one artist with disability develop his or her talent. Um, gain a career out of that. Of course, um, 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 making his his or her family proud, and I think that's enough to make a difference. And that's because I'm uh, I, I'm working on hope, and that is where actually what I want to see also in my music is also growing. It's not four years old; it's the same age as mine. You know? And you know, in twenty years, we'll be a senior citizen. And of course, uh, even to a simple way, I would like him to, of course. Uh, see that upon his retirement, he, on his retirement years, that he has done a lot, even with his condition. Um, and I, that's what I want to share with every family. Of course, uh, one step at a time, um, one artwork at a time, <laughs> and we'll get there. Thank you so much. That is such a such a hopeful and such a beautiful message and I, and I truly, truly believe in it as well. And um, for our viewers back home, um, I'm going to link Amos's links all down below. So please go and check out the really meaningful work that he's doing. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Amos. Thank you so much, Joel, for this opportunity.